All right, 8.3. Um, and let's take a look at 8.3 here. And uh, this one is about buying and leasing vehicles. So taking loans on vehicles for purchase or to lease a vehicle. So let's talk about what the difference is between buying and leasing a vehicle, first of all. Uh, buying, obviously, you realize what buying is. You pay the money that's required, and then you own uh, the vehicle. It's yours to own. If you lease a vehicle, okay, you are still paying for it, but in the end, it's not yours. So you don't pay quite as much. You don't pay the whole cost of the vehicle. You pay a portion of the cost of the vehicle. It's basically like a glorified renting of a vehicle, um, but you commit to kind of pay for the use of this vehicle for a certain amount of time. So a lease is an agreement to pay for the use of a vehicle for a specific period of time. So like I said, it's just like renting, but it's, uh, it's, it's a little bit more solid than renting. You, you can't just say, oh, I don't want this car next month, uh, or I only want, you know, I, I'm gonna get out of this deal. Well, th they like to sign two, three, four year leases, you know, whatever, so uh, a lease is a specific amount of time. So you'd still make payments kind of like you'd be renting the vehicle. At the end of the term, that's how many years that you would be leasing the vehicle for, then you have to turn that vehicle back to the owners or back to the uh, dealership or wherever you got it from. Uh, there would be an option though for you to buy out the vehicle. So at the end of the lease payment, let's say you got a $30,000 car and you, uh, you know, were, I don't know, paying five, 600 bucks a month to lease it, let's say. And at the end of the term, you've been paying for two or three years, there's still $20,000 left on the car. So you can walk away and say, I enjoyed the car for three years. Uh, or you can say, you know what, I'm going to pay the $20,000 and I'm going to buy the car out right now. Not the most efficient way to do that. Probably you end up spending a little bit more money in interest that way. But that's an option usually when you lease a vehicle. The only problem is you're paying a good amount of money for a car that's, that's uh, you know, when you finally get that paid off, if you are paying it off for a couple more years, then you own a five or six or seven year old vehicle and, uh, and then it's not worth as much. So, so you have to consider all those different types of things. Uh, so the residual value, as we uh, mentioned here, the residual value is the value when the lease is over. So how much is it actually worth when the lease is over? So if it's two or three years old after your lease is, has, is up. Okay, that's, and what you would have to pay to get it, residual. So residual is kind of what's left over, right? So what's left over to buy that car? Any questions about that uh, first page you know, sir? All right, let's take a look at our first example here, Roger. Roger that. Okay, Roger lives in Manitoba. Poor Roger. Uh, plans on purchasing a three quarter ton truck. The purchase price is twenty nine thousand four ninety nine. He must also. Are you buying a truck too? No, my dad bought a truck. Okay, your dad bought a truck. Yeah. Okay, good. I was just saying because it says Roger. Oh, is your dad Roger? Oh, buying a truck. Oh, okay. Roger. Okay, Roger that. Gotcha. Let's get back to the lesson, shall we? All right. Roger lives in Manitoba, plans on purchasing a three-quarter ton truck. The purchase price is $29,499. He must also pay 5% and 7% PST. Okay, so 5% GST, 7% PST. So the purchase price, listening carefully, includes the GST and the PST. All right? So that's 12% uh, there. So you have to add on 12% of this for the total price. So let's do that. You take this money right here, and 5% and 7% is 12%, so they split it up here. The GST would be 1,474.95, and the PST is 2,064.93, okay? So you wanna double check to make sure that you've done that question correctly. So the total purchase price would be the original purchase price plus the taxes to get a grand total of $33,038.88. You guys get that? Okay, so my, my question is my question is this. Could you could you take this uh, dollar amount and just multiply it like find twelve percent of this? Okay. Do you know what the quick way is to add twelve percent to this? Do you know how you'd calculate that? 
Uh, yes, exactly. So you take the purchase price. Whoops, not zero, zero, it's zero, zero. And you would multiply by, uh, if you want to add on 12%, you multiply it by 1.12. So that's like 100%, that's this number, and then 12% more. So you can find out what that is. And there's your number, 33,038. So again, if you want to find out, hey, what's this going to cost with 12% tax? Then just multiply that number by 1.12. If it's 24%, you want to find out what 24... If you want to find out what it's going to cost when you add 24% onto the total, then it's 1.24. That's what you multiply by. Oh, if you just want to find out what 24% is, then you multiply it by 0 0.24. That will give you a number smaller. That's 24% of it. But if you want to add the original price plus 12% or plus 24%, then you do 1 point, the decimal form of the percent. Yeah, that's a kind of a shortcut there for you. All right? Nice. It is nice. Uh, so B, uh, Roger does not have enough money to pay the full purchase price, but he can make a down payment of $10,000. And then to, he can take out a bank loan for the rest. So in this kind of question, you have to do this in two parts, guys, okay? The bank offers him a loan at 4.5% interest per year, compounded annually for a four-year term. What will Roger pay in total for the truck? So this is a multi-step program. Uh, problem that's really important that you guys know how to do, okay? So the purchase price, let's go down, let's look, look, look at the solution here, okay? So how much is he going to have to borrow from the bank? Well, this is the total purchase price. We just figured that out. So he's going to subtract $10,000 of his own money, and he's going to end up with this much money that he needs to get, uh, he needs to borrow. So you take the total purchase price minus his down payment. The next thing you have to remember is the fact that we are compounding, okay? This is a compounding interest calculation. So you have to use this formula. Please remember this formula. Jot that down in your cue card. Don't forget it. You need that for the test. And that formula, again, A is your future value, okay? And P is your original principal amount. R would be the annual interest rate, and N is the number of times per year that it gets calculated. And the exponent here will be the total number of compounding periods. That is, compounding periods n per year times the number of years. So we put that all together. You should have the principal is this money that he wants to borrow, 2303888, times 1 plus. The bank percent was 4.5% per year. Times so, 1. Time, yeah, this is going to be this number times... 1 plus, oh. and then the, uh, the annual interest rate is 4.5, the decimal form, divided by how many times it will compound per year, and it says it compounds annually, so that's once per year. So you just divide that by 1. And then the total number of compounding periods would be 1 times 4 years, so to the power of 4. So this should be the, the uh, this is how it works out. That's 1.045 to the power of 4 there. And just take this 1.045 to the power of 4. Don't do the whole thing to the power of 4. You're going to get like hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's going to get millions of dollars, whatever it's going to be. So, uh, so yeah, your, your end result here, once you do that calculation, should be 27,474.29. So please make sure you can do that in your calculator. It's very important that you're able to punch this in properly on your calculator. So take a moment, make sure you can do that. One more example from 8.2 here that we'll do together is this one about Francine. So Francine needs a van for her catering company. She's found one that costs $25,675, including all fees and taxes. Okay, she has two options to uh, buy this van. Uh, well, she can lease the van or she can buy it. So she could lease the van for four years. That's at $450 a month with a security deposit of $2,000. So because you're leasing the vehicle, they kind of want some assurance that you're going to treat it well and give it back to them. So they sometimes take like a down payment or a, a, a security deposit, here's what it's called. 
And that happens on a lot of things. Like if you rent um, uh, an apartment or something, there's a damage deposit, they'll call it, so that if something happens while you're there and then you leave and there's a big hole in the wall, then you don't get your damage deposit back. They right. use that damage deposit to pay to fix the hole in the wall or yeah, something. More than half of the rent. Yeah, there would be a limit to what it can what it can be for sure. But if you're kind of a dummy and really wreck the apartment before you leave, they can take you to court and all that sort of stuff. So you don't want to do that. But anyways, but yeah, the the security deposit for this is two thousand dollars. And there's also a delivery <laughs> charge to bring the van uh, at uh, 529.96. Okay. She also can use this uh, amount of money here, right, to uh, as a down payment, and take out a loan for the rest. So multi-step problems here. These ones are starting to get. You have to organize your work. So show your work. Make sure you keep track of everything. So the first question says calculate the total cost of leasing the van for four years if Francine damages the van and doesn't get her deposit back, okay? So you have to add the $2,000 onto the cost is what it's saying. She's not gonna get that back, okay? So how would we do that? How would we find out what this one costs? Any ideas to shout it out? Um, you have to find out how much it costs for four years and then add the damage thing to yeah. your delivery. Yes, so to find out how much it costs for four years, how are you gonna do that? Okay, so this is per month, right here, 450 per month, mm -hmm. and there's 12 months in a year, so times 12, and then it's for four years, so times four. Or 450 times 48, I guess, right? Yeah, you do that. Then add the 2,000 and add the 529. So let's, let's see if you got that one right. Yeah, 48 months, 450 times 48, so there's that, how much that's gonna cost, plus the 2,000 here, plus the 529. Excellent. So you should have a total cost right here of $24,129.96. I see some nods and I see some really confused faces. Is there some kind of error here? Should we check it? All right. Okay, yeah, yeah. Using the correct numbers would help. So that's good. Okay. So that is the correct answer for A. All right, what about, uh, what about B? What does it say here? Calculate the total cost of purchasing the van. So she can use this uh, money as a down payment, uh, and the rest will be at a loan compounded uh, monthly for four years. Okay, all right. So this, this number, we're gonna have to subtract what she's able to uh, take off of that for the down down payment, I guess. The rest will be at the loan price. So B should look like this. Here's the money that she has and minus what she's gonna pay for the down payment. So this is gonna be the money that she has to borrow. 23,145. Now we're gonna put that into the compound interest <coughs> formula and this is what we're gonna get. It, you okay with that? Do you get that number? Where do you get the what? 25,000? 25, this one? Yeah. That's the total, that's the original cost here uh, of the vehicle right here. Oh, okay. That's in the original question there. Alrighty. So you put that money into the, uh, uh, the compound interest formula. So here's the principal, the money we just highlighted. 3.15% uh, per year compounded monthly. So we do have to divide that interest rate, the annual interest rate by 12. So we don't, we don't charge that whole interest rate every month. It's a 12th of that every month. And then the total number of compounding periods would be 12 per year times four years. So your total should be this number right here. That should be what it costs her to buy it outright. Um, oh, actually, my bad. That's what the that's what the loan is going to cost her. That's what the loan's going to cost her. But we do have to add in the down payment, right here. Yeah. So here's what the loan will cost: the future value of the loan only. And then she did pay this already too. So you have to add both of those together. So this is her total cost. 
for purchasing. Okay, so we took that down payment off, then we calculated how much interest she would have to pay the bank, but then we have to add that uh, <coughs> down payment on because that's part of her total cost. Okay? Everybody good so far? Making sense? So C says, what would be the monthly payment for the loan? Uh, you take the entire cost there for that we found in B. So this $28,778.63. Okay, actually, for the bank payment, this is bank payment on the loan itself. So you just take this number right here, the 26248 and you divide that by... Uh, 48 because this is this is question is just asking for payments to the bank the down payment she, she doesn't have to worry about that anymore so the bank money divided by 48 gives the payment per month and then D said which option would you recommend to Francine Okay, so when what is your reasoning? So the total cost for uh, leasing would be twenty four thousand or so, a little over twenty four thousand. The total cost for purchasing would be twenty eight thousand. So what do you think? First option is cheaper, twenty four thousand versus twenty eight. But at the end, what? She loses the car. At the end, she doesn't get to keep the car. So an extra four thousand, you get to keep the van there. I guess the vehicle. So your the answers may vary here. Like it says that you could you could rationalize different things. You could say, hey, um, it's going to be an old van anyways. Probably don't want to. You know, it's not going to be worth much because I'm really going to run it pretty hard, and it's going to need a lot of work, and no one's going to want to buy this van. So I'm just going to pay the 24 and be done with it. Or you can say, I'm going to pay four or $5,000 more, and I'm going to have this van because I'm going to take, take good care of it. And it, it's, you know, I'm going to do my own work on it, and uh, it's going to be worth having something at the end. So there you go. Also, the monthly payments. The monthly payments, if that's a, if that's a deal, right? If your overhead for your business is high, you want to make uh, lower monthly payments, then the monthly payments for the, le for the lease are definitely less. So you've got four years of saving 100 bucks per month. That's, right? That's a big deal. Pretty big. Especially That's a big when deal. you first move out and you... Yeah. If you know you're going to want the van long term, maybe an extra 4000 to keep the van is not that big of a deal. If you're really not sure you want to keep the van, then uh, it will be up to you to decide. All right. So that's the... Uh, there's some questions for you guys to continue to do for 8.2. Wait, what? Well, that's 8.3. Sorry, yeah, that's 8.3. So, be some examples, uh, things for you guys to do. Any questions about 8.3? Can I get some water, please? Yeah, quickly. Cool, cool, cool. 